household revenue, uh, which was not categorized, it was measured on an interval uh, ratio uh, scale, was about 0.48 from memory. So the correlation between education and income category is, is lower than the correlation between age and income. But to be fair, it's a different variable. It's, inter it's income category that I'm, I'm correlating it with. Anyway, this is how you do a Spearman correlation uh, when you have ordinal data that you want to estimate the association uh, between. All right, so it's a correlation of 0.213. Now, in the previous video, I did a correlation between, um, in the previous cor Pearson correlation video, I did a correlation between age, which is scale uh, which is scaled on a ratio because you can I guess technically you can be zero to be safe we could say it's an interval scale uh, and income not income category but actual income I actually created this income category variable just for the purposes of doing a Spearman rank correlation on ordinal data uh, but from uh, if you watch the Pearson uh, correlation video, I identified income as very, very seriously non-normally distributed. And I'll show you again what that looks like, which could be a reason why you might want to rank order in, uh, income into an income category to get a more accurate uh, estimation of the association, because Pearson correlation assumes no, uh, normally distributed data. And here's the income variable. It's very obviously not normally distributed. Most people make, most household, most household, households have an income somewhere between uh, 20 and 70. The, most people are fitting somewhere between there in, in the histogram. Well, there's a few, it, the tail goes out here and there's a, have some very large uh, household incomes out towards the uh, 400 and 500 areas, a couple of people out there. Now, the correlation, when I estimated that with a Pearson correlation, disregarding the fact that the data are non-normally distributed, age and household income, and if I switch that to Pearson, I got a correlation of 0.48 rounded. So the m how older you are, the more money you make in your household. But the data are not normally distributed. So one useful application of Spearman correlation is to just calculate the Spearman correlation based on interval ratio data that are not normally distributed. Because what the Spearman correlation is going to do is it's going to actually convert all the data into ranks. All right, so this isn't a lecture about how the Spearman correlation is performed, but you just have to know that what it's doing is it's ranking the data uh, and so when you have ranked data, uh, you don't have to have the assumption of normal, normally distributed da uh, data. So if I go into correlate and bivariate, and I've got my interval ratio score scaled variables, one of which is very seriously non-normally distributed, I'm actually going to calculate it as a Spearman correlation instead, because I don't have to assume normally distributed data in this case. And what's the correlation I get? I actually get a bigger correlation. The Pearson correlation, on the a on the age in years and household income in thousands is 0.48, but because the data are non-normally distributed, and even possibly because there's a couple of outliers in the data, uh, the correlation is actually underestimated. When I calculate it as a Spearman correlation, the correlation's a fair bit bigger. It's actually 0.57 rather than 0.48. That's a big difference uh, in practice. Um, and this is one of the uses of Spearman correlation, and I use it on a regular basis in this context. I don't just use Spearman correlations on ranked data. I use them on interval ratio data that I have a hunch might be non-normally distributed. And so I get a very quick estimate of the, of the difference between the Pearson and, and, the, and the Spearman. And when I get differences that are large, I know that I have non-normally distributed data or an outlier. And it, uh, then I then go look into the histograms. Uh, but in this case, you can also uh, simply correlate the data between age and the categorized variable um, that I actually created as a rank, which is actually totally fine. But I'm going to calculate it as a Pearson correlation and see what that gives me. Actually, 0.54. Isn't that interesting? The correlation between age and years and household income measured on an interval ratio scale, so the full information is 0.48, if I do a Spearman correlation on those same two variables, I get a 0.57 correlation. 
However, if I actually f categorize income uh, so that um, there's not as much influence of the non-normal non uh, uh, distribution on the correlation, it's actually 0.54. So it's somewhere in between the Pearson correlation on the interval ratio data and the Spearman rank correlation on uh, on the um, household income variable uh, and the um, age variable. You'll probably have to listen to me say that more than once to actually understand what I'm going, what I'm actually trying to explain. But in the uh, but in summary, Spearman correlations are very useful uh, uh, to estimate a correlation between two variables estimated that are measured on interval ratio but are non-normally distributed and it's better I would argue than doing a log based transformation a lot of people would get a non-normally distributed variable and they would do a log based transformation uh, and and I'll probably do a separate video as to why I don't think that's ever a really good idea uh, instead you can just do a Spearman correlation and you get um, a bigger effect and arguably a more accurate one Anyway, thanks for listening.